Okay, we're back, and we were talking about chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. And again, along with those uh, notes, it's very important for you not to smoke when you have chronic obstructive pulmonary disease because that in lies continuing the, the scar tissue and the decrease of uh, and, and the changes of metamorphosis in the bronchial tissues that never allows that to heal. Now, if you stop smoking, the tissues will return to normal, meaning the squamous epithelium will vanish, uh, the uh, columnar epithelium will return, mucus continues to be produced, the smoker's cough go away. Now, one of the things uh, people will tell you, uh, looks like we have Ray on the phone. Ray, are you there, Ray? Hello? Hey, it's Ray the Flagman, how you doing? Good, how are you? I'm doing okay. You know, I want to congratulate you on last week's show. It was excellent. I know I called in at the end of the show. I gave you plenty of time to keep talking because you were just right on. And I said, I'm not going to interrupt him with a, with a phone call from Radio Flagman. But it was an excellent show. I talked to Chuck Augustine afterwards. He agreed. And so just congratulations. Thank you very you keep much. Keep on like this because it's really good. You know, you're talking about uh, smokers and that. Now, I was a smoker for 27 years. I smoked cigars. But with cigars, you really don't inhale. You chew on a cigar, you get the nicotine and, you know, by the chewing or whatever. I haven't smoked since July 23rd of 1996. Have my lungs recuperated? Have they come back? Because I'm told that if you stop smoking, that the lungs start, you know, uh, uh, becoming normal again. Now, is that the, the true synopsis, or is there something else to it that I should know about? No, they do, and um, what damage has been done has been done, but the lungs do. What, what I've shown patients is this natural curve. Your lungs will expand in their capacity to about age 26 to 30, and then they slowly start to decline at a very slow rate, meaning if we all live long enough, we'll, our lung tissues will deteriorate to a COPD state. So what ends up happening when you're smoking and when you're doing things, the, the slope of the curve is much greater so that the destruction is greater. But when you, whatever point you reached in that destruction and you stop smoking, it, the curve lifts up and the, the destruction takes place at the rate it would be if you were not a smoker. And there are some of the, the you know, there's a nice, uh, I've seen it on thing within like six months, your lungs are back to full function. Uh, well, you know, I got to ask you a question. Even though I stopped smoking for these many years, if someone lights up a cigar or a pipe, I enjoy it. I don't know what it is. It's just like I don't know if it, if I'm reminiscing, if I'm going back in time to when I did it. You know, it's not like I want to start again, but it's just enjoyable. Sometimes a car will pull by, and some guy will be smoking a pipe, and he's got the window down, and I'll be on the corner with the flag and the bill of rights, and I'm saying, hey, that's that's pleasant. I like it. Yeah. Is that a normal situation? Some people are repulsed by anybody smoking, you know? Well, What's your uh, opinion it, on that? No, no, exactly. And and so people that uh, there are there's the pleasurable smells, and your brain doesn't lose sight of them, and so or lose memory of them and so when you experience or you get around those those situations then you you know it reminds you of the enjoyable side of it and so pipe smoking and cigar smoking are more i think sociable events than cigarette smoking cigarette smoking is more of a blocking thing people will will do it when they get nervous and they get do it when they have good times and bad times and i mean who smokes 20 cigars a day i mean or 40 as far as one to two packs uh, so when people are stressed, they'll go out and they'll have a cigarette. It's kind of their way of, of relaxing. But when people have a cigar, that's usually sociable, or they're just just hanging around doing nothing. So, well, and pipe smoking is the same way. So I believe that there's actually a different set of circumstances that define cigar and and, and uh, pipe smoking. Well, you know, uh, Doc, when I stopped smoking, I want to share something with you. I didn't know I could go cold turkey, and it was. It was just, I just didn't go back, you know. But I continued to get cigar deliveries for, geez, over a year or so. You know, they, they would deliver 200 cigars. I accumulated 2,000 cigars. Well, I, I got the 2,000 cigars, and I say, in case of nuclear war, I'm going to start up again. <laughs> I mean, that's just the way it is. Nuclear war, I'm a smoker again. <laughs> I'm saying that's, that's how it's going to be. 
Well, I'm enjoying your show, and I'm going to let somebody else call in, and I'm so glad you're back on the air. You know, we really missed you for the months that you were gone. Yeah, well, thank you. I appreciate being back, and uh, that was, you know, there was just circumstances involved that, you know, we, I had to take a break, but I love doing the show, and I love the fact that you call in and ask very excellent questions. Um, you and Chuck and Louie and all the people that are regulars, I, I don't even plan anything to talk about on the shows because you guys call in and give me great topics to discuss that are just common everyday things and it's kind of like getting a house call without having to pay the uh, exorbitant fee to get it so well i'll tell you you got a good show and i want to remind everybody tomorrow is election day go out to vote at the polls are open from seven to seven at the community center and rate of flagman is going for the sixth time and six times a charm yep. so maybe i'll call in later but i'm going to open the lines up keep the faith and power to the people flagman Absol over and out absolutely thank you for calling in i appreciate that and uh, yeah it is that political season and and uh People say a lot of, of interesting things, and, and one of the things I, I do like about, um, especially the race that you're in, is that there are some negativities, but most of the people are talking about what they're going to do positive for the community, and I think that's a good thing, um, and as opposed to the other uh, political mudslinging, I, I'm, <laughs> I wouldn't want that. I mean, my job's tough, but I wouldn't want to put myself out there to get my uh, neck cut off all the time by all of the ugly things that people say about each other um, and I believe it's kind of like the drug reps that come into our office that are promoting a product I really it's very difficult when a drug rep comes in and talks about the negativity of every other product rather than promoting the good points about their product and if you have a good product and it sells itself you don't need to downgrade or destroy the other people out there. It's a kind of an insecurity thing when you're tearing the other people down because you really have nothing positive to offer uh, the other, the uh, constituents out there. So, um, you know, and I encourage that people get out and vote. I mean, that's really uh, what everybody has to do is to voice your opinion, is to get out and vote. I think we have Amy on the line. Hello, Amy. Hi, uh, Dr. Reiner. Welcome back on the uh, on the air. Thank you I've very much. I've a couple of shows, but Chuck called and uh, reminded me. So uh, I wanted to ask you about this uh, um, shingles virus that's going around. I just got over that, and I had it once before and didn't know you can get it twice. And I've been hearing good things about the vaccine that's out, but somebody said you have to take it twice. So maybe you can talk about that and this this whooping cough that's going around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is um, a very good, two very good points. Um, number one was the the shingles vaccine. Um, it, it's the way I describe the shingles vaccine in, uh, to patients. It's a wish sandwich. Um, if you had two pieces of bread, you wish you had some meat uh, that goes between the the bread. If you have shingles, you would have wished you would have gotten the vaccine. And the vaccine is um, better than, than I think it was. I think they actually have a second generation on it uh, out there. Um, but it, does, it doesn't necessarily limit the, um, actually I think it's a two series now is I think what they're talking about. Um, it doesn't limit the, the exposure to or doesn't prevent it, it can mitigate it. So even if you took the vaccine, if you were to get a shingles outbreak, you would get a minimal outbreak, a subclinical um, outbreak. Um, and so that's the reason to get it. Sometimes you may never get any manifestations of shingles, or if you did, it would get, you would get a much reduced version of that. That being said, there is a blood test out there. And remember, chickenpox or shingles, they're the same. When you get chicken pox as a young child, right. it, it comes right. up and it lives, and then it regresses and lives dormant in the nerves in, the, in your back. So, and it lives in a particular nerve root. So when it comes up again, you will see a red blister on one side of your body, not on the other, and it will be very, very painful. Your skin will burn and it will become very tender, uh, and then it will, um, start up with blisters and then you know you have a shingles. It could be one or two blisters or it could be three or four and it cover a huge amount of area in your body. Very, very painful disease, very difficult to treat. The older you get, the more painful it is and the possibility of developing 
post-herpetic neuralgia, which is a constant burning of the nerve that doesn't go away. Um, you can do a blood test doing a uh, Zoster IgG. Your doctor can order that test, and it will tell you what your antibody titer is. Now, antibody titers determine your risk for uh, disease. Normals are, depending on the lab, could be up to 196. I've seen people that have had the vaccine have been over 2,000, so they're very protected. I've seen people who've had shingles and they run about 13 to 1,400 as far as their antibody titer. If you're running about 200 or 300, chances are you may get a shingles outbreak and you should be looking to get the vaccine. Um, why you had it and then you had it again, sometimes you have to be careful that multiple um, shingles or multiple zoster outbreaks could represent a deficiency in your immune system and I would encourage you to make sure that uh, someone has done a maybe serum protein electrophoresis or looking at your white blood cells to make sure that your immune system is intact. Um, there have been rare cases where cancers have been diagnosed with people who have multiple shingles um, outbreak. Now, the other thing is that if you're an adult and you have um, not had chicken pox, if you were to get it as an adult, it could be deadly. Uh, there's about a 50 or percent higher mortality rate associated with an adult version of shingles. It's called you know, zoster, and you can get a, a varicella pneumonia, and it kills a lot of people. So, are you still there, Amy? You must have hung up. Well, I don't know if that answered your question, but. Um, I would encourage everybody that can get the vaccine uh, to get the vaccine. Uh, you have to be over a certain age. Um, there are people that don't like to get vaccines, and I understand that. Uh, but this is a disease, and it's really stimulating your memory that you already have. Memory waxes and wanes over time. That's the same reason we're having diphtheria outbreaks or whooping cough. Remember, when we were younger, we were immunized against diphtheria and pertussis and tetanus and so with those with those illnesses have come <clears throat> your immune system kind of de uh, decreases over time and as it decreases over time you're more likely to get whooping cough so that's why we're re-immunizing adults uh, to make sure that uh, if you haven't had it and it's been a while that you should think about getting re-immunized for uh, the whooping cough and I think they're doing a free clinic on that too uh, we have Steve on the phone Steve yeah, doctor, I, I, you were talking earlier about uh, this mudslinging in the political <laughs> form. Uh, you know, if you, if you follow the money, it's very interesting. Uh, for instance, that uh, district uh, assembly, it pays uh, $10,400 a year. I can make that part-time at Walmart, maybe working two days a week at your office, okay? And you look at what, what's their motives, okay? There's one one guy that he wants to save a tax that's costing him $250,000 a year. Well, I, I can see why he wants to run, but why does the other guy want to run? And also, if you look, and this is going to be verifiable, if you look at the county commissioner's races, they pay uh, a simple salary, I think it's like 28, 29,000 a year. Why would they want to spend so much money uh, on these elections? And if you go on the Secretary of State's website, you can verify what I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. And it's disgusting. It's, mm -hmm. it's absolutely disgusting. And I, I was wondering what your takes on that. Well, I'm not a political commentator, so I am. Um you know, I know a lot about medicine, and, and uh, I know about as much politics as you do because I watch what I and what I read. But um, that's always subject to what's being fed to me in, in a lot of ways. Um, but um, you know, Steve, hang on the phone. We're going to go to break, and then I'll give you my uh, ten cents worth on that. Thank you. <laughs> 